Okay, tape rolling. We are doing a vlog. We're actually comparing uh, a Canon 7D Mark II in JPEG format versus iPhone 7. Uh, we're going to photograph Louie and we're going to do a little bit of a comparison. I'm Steve Gabers, ING Photography. Um, this is Betsy Higgins and she's actually, she's buying a phone, maybe a camera today, and we're going to use this data yeah. to hopefully make that decision. So, Betsy's going to take a, a hold the camera recording me taking a picture of Louie. Louie, let's go, buddy. You've been so good. You've been in so many photos. He's he's our spokesman for Elmwood Pet Supply now. Come here. Come here. Sit down. Sit down, boy. Sit. Go, boy. All right. Hang tight there. Go, boy. Stay. Stay. Let's see. Uh, let's see what he does here. Let's see. Oops. I gotta make some adjustments. Okay. Me too. Louis, hanging right there. And looks exposure looks pretty good. You could show the camera and Louis. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off and we're gonna we're gonna take the camera, we're gonna stop rolling for a second. Okay, we're back. We are uh, gonna look at Louie JPEG. Okay. Alright, that one's out of focus, but I'm gonna make this pretty big. This is not a studio display, this is a um an, a cheapo Acer 24-inch monitor. Um, let's get a little bit closer. Now, one of the things I didn't take into account is the crop factor on the phone. This wide angle is actually pretty wide. I ha didn't look up the specs, but I think that it's about a 24 millimeter. Um, the phone's wide open there. Uh, I didn't look at the metadata, so I, I apologize. I could go back if we want to be pixel peeker peepers and look at that stuff later. Now, over here, I've got the 7D Mark II, it's hard doing this through the phone, uh, 7D Mark II file. We've got Louie here, we converted a JPEG, and I'm gonna open that with preview, and we'll do a comparison in a second. Now, this is the cheapo 17 millimeter F4 on the 7D Mark II, okay? Um, I could already see it's just crisper and cleaner. Now, it is a little bit closer, uh, that crop has taken the 17 mil to, I forget what that comes out to, I think it's like 24 or something like that, pretty close. Um, now, I will bring this up to full size in this screen. Now, let's do a comparison. Side by side, I'm going to take that image, and I'm going to crop this down a little bit, just so we can ha kind of have them side by side. Let's see. Uh... Let's see if I can do this. Oh, there it is. Okay, that, that, that. Good. I'm going to bring this over. And it's pretty close. Let's, uh, should I go out? Okay. So, yeah. now we've got the two images side by side. Uh, ambient light on a tripod. Uh, the iPhone 7 plus was not uh, plugged in. I have a little adapter for it and I couldn't find it. I'm sure it's lurking around somewhere. Uh, but here's what we got. These are our side by side. Um, the image on the left from the 7D Mark II looks a little soft. Um, the image on the right looks a little hard. Uh, if, I, if I really get into it, I mean, the tonal contrast and the, just the overall image quality is just really nice in here. I mean, obviously I've got his face in focus, shallow depth of field, and it falls off, but the, just the tonal contrast and the detail, it's just real, real nice. Um, all I did was open the file and save it as a JPEG. It was actually shot as a RAW, so this isn't exactly apples to apples, but I did drop down the resolution when I saved in JPEG. Uh, coming back over to the iPhone image, um, and it is cropped a little bit, but you could just kind of see... Um, Will it let me move? Where's the hand tool? I probably have to hit the space bar and I can't do that with my hands. No. Mm, no, it won't let me do it. That's okay. Um, but you can kind of see the fallout there in the iPhone image. I mean, the image is just breaking apart. Uh, there's just not a lot of detail there. The lit image is literally falling apart there. Um, I forget what that's called. It's not banding. Um, you'll have to apologize. I'll have to excuse my ignorance, but... Uh, it just the image is de uh, falling apart. There's just not a lot of detail in it, you know. Um, 
Whereas if we come over here to, there's gotta be a way to move them. I think it's spacebar here, hold this for a second. I wanna have these lined up. Are they these... falling apart though, Steve O'Hunter? I... Uh, bear with me, there is a technical, um, oh, there it is, okay. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna come over here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And let's come back over to the little guy on that screen. I wanna scroll over. Um, yeah. So, 7D Mark II. Look at the zoom. Look at the detail in his face, right? Um, scrolling a little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's you can just see the fur, the blacks, yeah. all the tonal contrast in between. I mean, it's all the information is oh. there. Whereas over here, it's like, it's trying to get it, It's it, but the info is just not there. It's falling apart. Oh, yeah. Now, is it is it the lens quality? Is it the sensor size? Is it the light? Uh, I mean... It's a, probably a combination of those things, um, but it's just not apples to apples, regardless. And when we get into this, you start going to YouTube and, and drilling into, um, yeah, you know, different when factors. When you do it close, it's so apparent. You see what I'm saying, though? It really does give yeah. you... Now, I'm, I'm actually a little disappointed. I mean, as good as the iPhone um, camera is, uh, and again, I, this may not be a fair comparison just because I did shoot in RAW. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know that the JPEG image would have been that much worse. This is a low-res file uh, saved JPEG. Um, uh, but I am a little disappointed in the, in, the, uh, in the iPhone camera because, you know, it's ambient, uh -huh. good light, dog yeah. wasn't moving around a whole lot. Right. Uh, you know, we're zoomed in here. But it's not like I'm, you know, it's crazy zoomed in. Even when we pull out the, uh, there's just, I don't know. It's just that they're, uh, I, I, and I, I apologize for my in the internet audience. I don't know, you know, they call it artifacting, um, you know. Well, you were you, saying breaking apart. But falling apart. Yeah, the image, I, I, say, I say that the image is falling apart just because when we come in here. Yeah, what a difference. The, the deep, oh. there's just no information. Um. I know sometimes the cameras they have like these, um, oh, yeah. uh, they have these filters. Uh, it's essentially firmware that goes into kind of correcting the image and trying to counteract you know, that. Then. Yeah, I mean whether it's giving you detail uh, or a sharpness in camera before it actually gets to post production, little things like that and saturation, mm -hmm. um, all, all these different little kind of algorithms that the machine is running for you. Um, kind of lead to this and when you when you get in close and if you were to yeah, make this a print a yeah you can see it's like well the information just isn't there and we were talking about that before with like um these cameras any of the cameras really these days uh that you have latitude especially when you shoot in raw mm -hmm. to underexpose overexpose bring back detail in uh the higher and lower range even the midtones of the image you could really manipulate it and do a lot more with the image and that's apparent here um, as we zoom in, I mean, I'm not even exactly. zoomed in as much, right? And oh. the the difference is just striking. Now, again, too, it's for me anyway. It's worth noting that this is a crappy lens. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's the f4 17 to 24 on the uh, Canon 7D Mark II, which is great camera. I, mean, I love that camera, um, but there is no post production done to this image. Shot ambient on tripod, yes. But shutter speed 100 f f4, um, and I think we're at ISO 400. So I mean, I'm really not pushing the boundaries of the camera right. at all. And look at and it. I'm giving it kind of the worst case scenario, like, hey, let me put a crappy piece of glass on there, mm -hmm. and you look at the two, and it's like there. I don't think there's even a comparison. So I was actually trying to get um, Betsy to buy an iPhone and not buy a camera, but I kind of made the argument for myself where she may, <laughs> well, if she wants to actually do photography, uh, you know, to enjoy herself, and maybe she's the next uh, Annie Cancel. Leibovitz. Um, <laughs> that, uh, that she may need some level of a digital, uh, SLR or, uh, mirrorless, what have you. So, uh, anyway, I hope that, uh, this video has been, uh, useful to some people. I apologize for my lack of, uh, detailed knowledge on, uh, you know, the algorithm, algorithms, the machine, the processor, uh, and whatnot in the iPhone versus the 7D Mark II. I'm a little ignorant there, um, but hopefully it does give folks, if anything, uh, a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison as to, you know, what you're dealing with in image quality coming out of an, uh, an iPhone, a good iPhone, um, or good camera phone versus what you're dealing with when you're looking at even a low res, uh, um, digital SLR. So thanks so much. 
This has been uh, uh, the closing of 2017, our little in-house uh, 16, uh, going into 17 in-house experiment. Uh, Steve Gabers, I'm uh, ingphotography.net, and this is... Betsy Higgins. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I don't know what you don't have a Twitter handle oh, or Facebook, a website, anything. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna work on that. Library lover. Yep, that's what. And this is and this is her her oh, yeah. faithful companion, <laughs> Sophia. Who's been snoring? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Bye now.